Howdy folks, how's it going? Welcome to my virgin kitchen, it's Barry here. You're looking gorgeous, gorgeous I tell you. Homemade dime bars. Good times. That's right, homemade dime bars, and trust me, these taste identical, identical to the real things. They are so good, and I made mine pretty darn big, as you will see any minute now. This was part of the recipe selector on myvirginkitchen.com. It was either funnel cake or the homemade dime bars, and the dime bars just shaded it, but I do want to try and make a funnel cake, so maybe I'll do that soon. Uh, but people like Rosie Holmes, Tori Maine, Megan Roberts, Keith Cropper, Bethany Cheath, and Felix Herman. Felix Herman, that's a cool name. Bella Sun, that's a cool name too, and Will McKinnon, amongst many others, voted for this. You have made a wise choice, my friends. We make this together. If you want to have a go at making it, hit pause on a video now. Write all these ingredients down. This is how you do it. First up, we'll make our moulds. And what I did was grab a sheet of tin foil and my phone case. I wrapped it around there to make a funky little foil mould, which worked a real charm. Just to say, guys, that step is completely optional. If you want to make a huge dime bar tray bake and make it easier for yourself, you can pour the whole mixture into like a silicone tray and chocolate on the top. But knowing you guys, you would have wanted me to make the bars, so I did the harder option. To make our filling, grab yourself a saucepan, whack in your butter, sugar, golden syrup, aka corn syrup, and whack that onto your hob on a medium flame. Mix it together as it melts, and it will start to bubble and go light and golden brown. Be very careful with this step, but once it's at that light golden brown stage, take it off the heat, pour in your almonds, and you want to put that back on the heat to warm through again, mixing it through only for around about four or five minutes. You want to keep it that nice light golden brown color, because if you burn it, that'll be minging. With your filling at that stage, it's time to pour it into the moulds. Now obviously doing what I do is quite hard to film because it does cool down very, very quickly. So here's what I quickly captured. I started to spoon it into one case, but do that to all the others. And what you'll find is that sets super, super quick. Can you hear that? Really, really hard stuff. So whack all your moulds into the fridge and it's time to melt our chocolate. Yep, so melt up your chocolate, you know, the pan over the simmering water, giant food style, and let it get it all fully melted, but then let it stand for five minutes off the heat. That way it's slightly cooler and the chocolate won't run off. With the middles out of the fridge and all nice and chilled, remove them from their foil moulds and slowly dip them into that chocolate. Roll them around, oh my goodness, that looks good. Carefully lift them out and droop off any excess chocolate before letting them rest on a nice little rack. Do that to all of them and you're in heaven. And that's it then guys, just to say, when you whack them in the fridge, give them a real good two hours to firm that chocolate up, otherwise it'll be sliding all over you. It really is worth it, you get that amazing crunch on there. And remember, you guys voted for this recipe, so get involved on My Virgin Kitchen for the next poll. And in fact, I can't decide what to make, so let me know down below what you want to see me make next, and I'll put them, my two favourite ones in there, and we'll sort of battle it out as usual. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe and comment. If you try out the dime bars, send me a picture, at my virgin kitchen and I will see you again next time.